first is uh, it's important to examine the patient and you should ask also the patient to keep the end muscles, uh, uh, neck muscles relaxed. Okay, but you can also check it just to turn around the hand of the patient smoothly. Okay, and then to examine the neck rigidity, it's a this movement. Okay, so this should be uh, um, but not slowly, but, um, one movement. Okay, and as you have seen, it's uh, easy to bend the, uh, the neck normally. If the patient has uh, meningitis, so this uh, neck rigidity is positive, then uh, during this, this movement, after a, a while, you will feel the resistance. Okay? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Like, uh, the All you do is shake the neck. Hmm? You just shake the neck and yeah, just you just the <coughs> control for that it is a really uh, uh, just check the movie out relaxed. Nice. <laughs> then uh, the Bluchinsky sign, if we examine this Bluchinsky sign, is the same thing to perform uh, this neck flexion. But if it's positive, then the the reaction will be the flexion of the knee. If it's positive. If it's positive. Okay. So with this movement, you will see that the patient has this reflector reflection with the knee. Okay. So that's for the... Brudzinski. And it's also meningeal sign. Meningeal sign. Okay. Then next is the carnid or uh, lesser sign. Okay. Then the patient also should be uh, keep relaxed, relaxed uh, this. And this is an um, elevation of, of the limb. It's very simple. The movement is very simple. Okay? Okay. And uh, the, if it's positive, then this after, so during this uh, flexion, you will uh, receive, receive this uh, reflection flexion in the hip and then, okay? If it's uh, a kernic sign, it's positive. If the last set, in the case of the last set, then during the elevation, after a, after a certain distance, then you will also resist the equation that has indicates pain. Okay? That's it. We continue with the... Okay. We continue with the talk, like... Can you pause it? Then, uh... Uh, yeah, cranial nerves, that's... Uh, first, cranial nerves, it's the olfactory nerve, then it's a uh, book. You don't have to do performance, it's a... Then next is the opticus nerve. From the opticus nerve, what has to be examined at the bedside is the examination of the visual acuity okay, and the visual field. Then to examine the visual acuity has to be performed by by, by by one by one with the eyes. The patient should cover one eye or the doctor covers one eye. It officially has to examine from five meters. I do it as it should be in the book. How many fingers? Three. One. Okay, then the other eye. Four. One. Okay. And what if you can't see it? Hmm? What if you can't see okay, it? Okay, if the patient, if the patient did, uh, didn't see the fingers, then the doctor is coming closer and closer. And it has to be uh, 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 estimated how, from which distance the patient is able to read fingers. So, for example, only from one meter. And uh, if not, if one meter patient can, is not seeing the fingers, then next step is uh, with, um, in front of the eye, very close, in front of the eye, how many fingers. If the patient cannot see, the next uh, level is to determine if the patient can see finger movement. That's the movement, because movement uh, uh, sensation is more preserved than the clear vision. Finger movement, one by one, and then uh, if the patient didn't see movement either, <coughs> the next is the light sensation, so with the pupillary lamp, to ask the patient is able to perceive light, and uh, if there is no light sensation, then this is the blindness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, not, so not together. Okay. Then, so this is the visual acuity. The next step is the, it's also for the second optic nerve, is the visual field examination. And this is also 
perform one by one. So doctor covers one eye of the patient, and uh, the patient <coughs> has to um, ask to uh, look forward. So, for example, to look at the nose or forehead of the doctor. Okay, so look forward, and then the patient should uh, indicate if the uh, uh, see finger movement. Okay. A finger movement, so here it's um, the, uh, this movement of the fingers has to be performed as a, like a door surface, so starting from behind the head and coming gradually and forward. Yes, okay, and then okay, so every quadrant of the uh, visual field has to be examined, so the same thing from upward. And then from the, the next, uh, other eye. Okay. Okay. And here is what is technically could be, uh, can be a make a mistake if, if you do it too fast. Because uh, if you do it too fast, the patient will indicate that when you are already in front of the eye. Then you cannot track normally, normally, the temporal. Uh, visual field, normally the patient can perceive movement from here, right? Do you see here? Yeah. Well, if you do it too fast, then you cannot touch it if the patient has a visual field detect or not. Okay? Then, which visual field detect uh, can, we can find, you know, the big. So now I go and see the rest of the information, okay? Then, uh, next is the uh, oculomotor nerve. The three, four, and six. The cardinals. Okay, then uh, this is for the examination of the finger movement. And for this one, uh, we ask the patient to follow with the eyes an object, which is most commonly the finger of the doctor. Here it's important that uh, to keep a certain distance, so not in front of the eye, because then the patient has to be perform con convergent uh, eye movement. So then look at my fingertip and follow with the eye. Okay? And then at the at the eccentric position, so end position, it has to be a, for a, a little bit examined. Uh, the, is there, if the patient has nystagmus, if, if the patient is able to keep a gaze in a lateral position. Okay? And again, by the uh, end point, it has to be examined the, mm -hmm. the next mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And I move on should be uh, examined also the vertical direction, then oblique direction. Okay. So, but here you have to examine the patient. I movement first smooth because this is the smooth pursuit eye movement. If the patient is able to perform this in every direction, if, if, if the, the eye movement conjugated or aligns the eyes, and if not, then the patient should indicate uh, double vision, hypnopia, and uh, nystagmus exam with this eye movement examination. The patient has any status. Okay? <coughs> then uh, next is the pupillary reaction. Pupillary reaction is the part of the which, which cranial nerve, the second and the third. Okay? Then the direct pupillary reaction is that the uh, light in the pupil and examine the contraction of the pupil on both sides. Is it visible? That is very nice. And then the indirect is that uh, in one eye, the light is in one eye and then and the pupil on the other side should also contract. Okay, so now I'm examining the left side and give light in the right side. Okay, then yeah, this was the pupil reaction. Next step of the physical examination is the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve main function is the, the sensory innervation of the skin of the face, and the masticatory muscle. This is the motor function. Then to examine the uh, sensory function of the trigeminal nerve, 
Central facial nerve paresis, only this, this uh, unilaterally, only this muscle is weak. And we examine the muscles around the uh, eye, the very orbicular, oculic muscles. We ask the patient to close the eyes strong and not allowed to open. Okay, so normally we cannot open it it's strong enough. And uh, the forehead muscles <coughs> wrinkle the forehead. And it should be also uh, symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then eight is the uh, vestibular cochlear nerve, which is for the healing and the vestibular function, which is mostly the balance function, uh, <coughs> movement, sensation, the self -filing. Then uh, to examine the cochlear nerve, the hearing has to be examined. It's the most simple way to examine the cochlear nerve. It's uh, to ask the patient if he is able to feel this uh, small finger movement. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Wait, wait. And it's the same both sides. So the, if it's, uh, the patient is able to hear it, then it uh, can be considered as a normal hearing. But, uh, exact examination of the hearing is with audiometry, it's just a robust uh, examination. Then uh, to examine the vestibular nerve, this um, a test is con uh, contain, uh, contains the examination of the nystagmus, which we already have performed with the eye movement examination. Then to e 